Hello, welcome to exercise of lesson six. What we need to do here is create an eight element array with the following data. We have the data listed here, uh, numbers, and then we want to get some practice using an enhanced for loop. So we want to create an enhanced for loop to search through this array and print out the maximum and minimum elements of the array. Now we've already talked in the past about a, a good simple ways to, to run through an array's elements and find the maximum and minimum elements. What the difference is here is instead of just creating a loop variable and going until the end of the array, we want to use the enhanced for loop so that we can learn how to use that. So let's go down here and see how we do that. We're going to create an array called numbers. Inside the curly braces, I've put all of the data that we have had in our problem here and they're integer data. So this is an integer array. And then we need to create some variables. Let's create one variable called smallest and one create called largest. We're going to initialize both of those to the first element of the array. That's just a starting point. We're going to loop through all the elements uh, and comparing the new, the new values that we come across against what our current value for smallest and largest is. All right. And then we're going to come down here and here is the, the part that we really want to focus on for this lesson. Usually what you would do, uh, for instance, in the C programming language or even in Java before this point, is you would create a loop variable i, you would set it equal to zero, and you would run from zero all the way up until the end. In this case, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight elements. So we would run the loop from zero to seven. And then inside of here, we would go ahead and do the comparisons, um, comparing the new values we come across compared to, to what we have for the smallest and largest numbers. But here, for this enhanced for loop, you don't have any loop index variables or anything like that. It looks quite foreign. The way it works is inside of the for loop, you just say int element and you put a colon and then you put the name of the array you're trying to loop through. So the numbers comes from the fact that we want to loop through the array that we call numbers. And the guy before that is uh, we, we're saying that it's a, an integer type and we're, we can call this anything we want. I called it element to help me remember what we're doing, but I can call it anything I want. What's going to happen is when we start the loop, what the, uh, what the guy's going to do is we're going to start in the array called numbers and we're going to grab the first element. It's an integer type, so the 12 goes into this variable called element. And then as we go through the next time, we're going to go to the next element, which is 43. When that 43 will be stored in this variable that we're calling element. And then we loop through again and we go to the next element and the next element. Every time we go through the loop, basically all we're doing is we're taking the element that we're, we're, we're working on, temporarily storing it in this variable that I've specified in the loop so that I can do a comparison or whatever I'm trying to do. Um, and, and then I complete whenever I'm done with all of the elements. So it completely eliminates the need for keeping track of the index and all of that. If you just want to go rip through your loop and, and, and look at all of the values, this is the easiest way to do it without really any thought. You just say, hey, I'm going to create a temporary variable called element. I'm looping through this array. And every time I go through here, this will contain the next element as I go down my array. Now, what are we doing inside? This is kind of similar to what we've done before. As we go through for each element, I'm checking to see if the element is smaller than the variable that we call smallest. And if it is, then we'll reset the smallest to the current element that we're on. Simultaneously, I'm going to check and see if the element I'm on is larger than the largest value I have. And if it is, which is specified by this variable, if it is, then I'm going to reset what's inside of that variable to the current element. So every time I'm going to go from 12 and then I'm going to go to 43 and I'm going to go to 54 and I'm going to go to 2. And every time I go through there, I'm going to print out or I'm going to compare and see if the current element that I'm on is smaller than the smallest value or larger than the largest. And if so, I'll make the alteration. Eventually, I'll fall out of the loop and then I'm going to print out the smallest number is whatever the smallest value is and the largest value is whatever the largest value is. Let me go ahead and hit that guy and let's go ahead and hit run. The smallest number is two, the largest number is 65. And that's right, the smallest number is two, the largest number is 65. Now the nice thing about this is I can change this array up here. I can add more elements if I want and that's and everything else is taken care of automatically uh, by the way in which it's set up. So for instance, if I put 54 and then I put like, let's do a negative number, negative nine, and then I do 288. So I've just added three elements to it. I don't have to change anything because this enhanced for loop is automatically going to loop through all available elements. And every time it loops through, it's just going to grab the next element in the chain. 
So I don't have to worry about the length of the array or anything like that. It's all taken care of. So I'll hit save and then I'll hit run. The smallest number is negative nine. The largest number is 288. So keep in mind this nifty thing called the enhanced for loop. Basically, you specify the array you want to loop through. You specify a variable that you kind of initialize in here that you want to kind of temporarily hold the next value. So whatever type of array you have is what the type of variable that you want here. If you have double precision numbers here, then this, you want this to be a double. As you loop through it, the current value of the array is going to be stored here, and then you can do whatever you want in here with it, and then eventually you'll just go through all of the elements until the loop is over. It completely replaces the need to keep track of a lot of these details that we've been doing in the past. So practice with this guy, go off to the exercises and gain some practice from what I have for you to practice with there, and just keep in mind that the enhanced for loop is there for you anytime you need to loop through arrays, it really can save a lot of time.